Hey everyone, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast. Hey look, I uh, got a couple of big shows coming up uh, on Tuesday, July 9th. Come on out to Naked Vine in Chesterfield, Missouri, 7 o'clock for our singer-songwriter storytelling showcase. This is uh, every second Tuesday of the month. July, I'm bringing along Jesse McClary, Zach Anderson, and David Manis of the Manis Brothers. Uh, Jesse and Zach, you will know from Old Capital Square Dance Club. So uh, come on out. Uh, I also just got the word that uh, Matt Glickert, uh, Chef of the Year from Sauce Magazine, will be out there grilling up some grilled cheese. So come on uh, out there. Come hungry. And uh, we'll have plenty of wine, whiskey, and tequila and local craft beers, as always, out there at Naked Vine. So check them out. Uh, full listing of details at Naked Vine. Dot net. Be sure to follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And uh, we got some great music also this week. Uh, Wednesday, July 10th, uh, David Terry takes the stage. Friday, July 12th, One Way Traffic. And Saturday, July 13th, Taylor Steele and Love Preachers. So do not miss those shows. This is going to be a lot of fun. Some of my favorites. Uh, again, everything at NakedMind.net. Um, also, want to tell you about my friends at Joseph Meyer Club. Uh, if you haven't been over, uh, over there, check it out at JosephMeyerClub.com. Um, they do. Uh, they have this really great foaming aftershave that I've been using. I love it. Uh, it smells great. It's a fantastic product, and I think you'll dig it too. If you use my code RPPJMC20 during checkout, you can receive an exclusive 20% off today so check it out rpp jmc20 at josephmeyerclub.com uh also uh one last announcement um i recently worked out a deal with heil microphones and i want to give them a big shout out uh, this intro is recorded on my brand new heil microphone and so i've been having a lot of fun recording with this big thanks to heil for all their support Check them out, Heil Sound, uh, for all your microphone needs. Uh, support local. They're they're based right over there, Fairview Heights, Illinois. Thanks, everybody, for listening. Thanks uh, for all the continued support. Be sure to uh, follow along with Rock Bear Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And tell a friend. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day. Um, a podcast is kind of like a, it's like a radio show that's not on the radio it's on, it's on the internet. Does that make sense? Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> That's also like my mom. Uh, it makes it sound more confusing, doesn't it? Uh, it sounds like this. Hey, this is Tony Gardner from the Comedy Digest, and you're listening to Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast. Rock Paper Podcast, y'all. Hey everybody, Shane Presley here, Rock Paper Podcast, coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, hanging out today with Tony Gardner. Welcome to the show, my friend. Hey Shane, thank you for having me, buddy. This is uh, this is cool, man. I, I say this a lot, opening the show, uh, and today is no exception, but uh, th- this is uh, what's fun about this show for me, is like I get to meet people doing cool stuff around town, and uh, I get to... Uh, you know, sometimes it's a lot of musicians. I, I, I enjoy talking to our musicians. And I've been trying to, I try to do my part with comedy, but uh, we have a lot, I feel we have a lot more bands than, than uh, com- comedians around town. So I agree it's, with so that, it does, yeah. it's So it's more frequently music, but I love hanging out with my buddies uh, that make comedy. Uh, you know, I've had a bunch of, of our favorites on the show and over the years, and I haven't had as much comedy as of most recently. But I'm glad that you're here today that we got to, uh, going to talk about some of your comedy, some of what you've been up to, and um, we've got a big show coming up this yeah. weekend. And But I, like I said, this show is just a great networking tool for me to allow to, like, we've been kind of friendly online for a little yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. And, like, this is a cool time where we can sit down and actually get to know each other and become real friends. Yeah, we're going to become best friends by the end of this. Oh, yeah. Uh, we're going to go make balloon animals after this. Yep. It's going to be... We're uh, going to get an apartment together. We're going to... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to love that apartment, yeah, too. Yeah. I'm going to furnish it, and I'm going to yell at you every time you throw your towels on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to be really upset with you, Shane, yep. but it's out of love. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, let's uh, let's start this off. Uh, we got a big show again, like I said, uh, coming up this Friday night, and let's yep. just get it out there. 
Um, we uh, on July twelfth. I want to make sure I had the date right. Yes, uh, July twelfth. We have a big uh, benefit show you're hosting. And yeah, and this is, obviously has a ton of personal ties to you. Uh, but this is a um, we're, we're calling the show Humor vs. Tumor, and yes. it's a it's a comedy show. Uh, benefit for uh for what, heidi yeah my niece heidi uh show humor versus tumor um july 12th at the heavy anchor uh my niece heidi uh in january was diagnosed with craniopharyngioma uh try saying that five times oh, fast yeah. it's <laughs> that's the worst right. uh it's actually a brain tumor on her pituitary gland um uh so you know with medical bills and stuff with my sister i decided i was going to do my part to try and help and uh i figured what i do is tell jokes and uh why not try to tell jokes for a good cause so i got some of the best local comics in town uh to want to come do this and then uh we're ending the night with some karaoke uh yeah. at a great bar that should have more karaoke honestly but uh <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it, it should be a, a lot of fun um i'm really excited about it uh, trying to do some good uh while doing the things i love with the people i love mm-hmm. so uh would love to have everyone who can come out to it, honestly. So this is an 8 p.m. start Yes. at the Heavy Anchor. We're doing a $10 suggested donation at the door. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously, uh, feel free to open your hearts and open your wallets and uh, kick in some more. It's all going right to Heidi and the family and yes. take care of some, some of these um, obviously crazy expensive medical bills and, and everything. So, uh, But yeah, we mentioned uh, some of the best. We do have a killer lineup, uh, a bunch of my friends. Uh, we have uh, JC Sabala, who's a friend of the show. Uh, super fun, super funny guy, years. yeah. Um, and I, I really enjoy, uh, especially following him online, some of the stuff with him and his son and stuff, just because it, it makes me crack up. Like Especially that picture of them two sitting wearing the Iron Man mask yeah. and stuff. Yeah, like just chilling on yeah. the couch. <laughs> so, so uh jc's great and uh, that's, sweet guy. that's gonna be fun and he cares a lot about st louis comedy and uh i'm really glad he volunteered to be on the show and like it meant a lot to me when he said that he was gonna do it uh i'm very excited about that mm-hmm. um who else is on the lineup it's going to be jc and then sam lyons uh another great guy uh my sister actually chose him uh, because she's seen him a couple times and she loves his hair and she thinks having him on this show for her daughter means she's going to be able to touch his hair. So I don't oh. know if that's going to work out, but you yeah. Know. Well, I mean, we said it on the record now, so it's, it's got to happen. You hear that, Sam? Yeah. She's going, she's going for the head. Put, put, <laughs> putting you on the spot. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, Sam. And that's kind of the fun of these uh, shows like this too, is like, um, you know, I might know JC or what, or you know Jeremy or whatever, but it's like you know, it's always fun to just kind of show up and get to know somebody else too, and, and get to you know hear their their style of comedy and everything. Yeah, uh, Sam also does uh, a podcast through Impolite Company, uh, Lions Den. Okay, I've been on that once. Um, he's just a lot of fun to talk to. He, you don't know what he's going to bring up or talk. We talked about strip clubs for oh, yeah. like a good fifteen minutes on that show. So, uh, and I have like two strip club stories <laughs> by the end of the. Uh, you know the interview I sounded like I went to a lot of strip clubs right. <laughs> <laughs> so that was fun yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's also Jeremy Helwig like you mentioned yeah. uh, uh, Jeremy again I've known him for a long time he's a really nice guy uh, he does Sorry Please Continue with Kenny Kynes uh, and Amy Milton and then uh, you know a certain, a random people coming in sitting on the couch with them stuff other comedians and it's a really great show and podcast which you all should check out sorry Definitely. please continue yeah man um and then we have amber clear uh she does a lot of stuff in the whole uh like greater st louis area and she's just hilarious she's a powerhouse uh she's a force that once you see her once you're like i need to look this chick up and she is great and uh i haven't been able to work with her too much uh, i've only done like maybe one show with her she did my comedy digest show um okay. last year sometime i believe and uh and then rounding out the show will be Angela Smith, um, who is just uh, you know phenomenal. She uh, kind of just came onto the scene and blew everyone away. And uh, I just love working with her. Like she kills the room, and I think that uh, that's going to really round out the whole night. And everyone's just gonna you know. <laughs> they're gonna be like i can't believe i spent ten dollars on seeing this right. for a good cause yeah. and it's just gonna i'm really excited about that you know i feel like it's going to be a great lineup and it's gonna be a great time man man for sure that uh 
again, uh, all this happened on Friday, July 12th, yes. uh, 8 p.m. and uh, at the Heavy Anchor. So, uh, but yeah, I, I agree with you, like you were saying about it's nice when you can call on your friends and have them come out and support, and especially knowing that nobody's getting paid. Yeah, uh, you know, it's all for a good cause here, and uh, I, I, I know because. I did a I did a Toys for Tots benefit last year. Uh, okay, and obviously this is a little more personal for you, but uh, you know I, I wanted I've been wanting to give back to the neighborhood and do some fun for the absolutely raise uh, raise some money and some toys and have a have a good time doing so. And uh, and but it really meant a lot to me. The same thing, like I called on a bunch. Uh, I had five bands play my show, and you know to call on them, especially for. Uh, you know, uh, several people in those bands, you know, it's like, and say, Hey, look, man, no money. It was all for, the it's kid. all for a cause. Yeah, it's yeah. all for the kids. And they're like, yeah, we want in. And I'm like, cool. All right. And, you know, so, uh, I felt really good to, you know, like I said, to make those calls and people respond in, in, in such a way. And they're like, and then afterwards they're all like, Hey, when are we going to do this again? Like, so I, uh, I put it out there on the, uh, STL, uh, comedians Facebook page. Um, and it took like 15 minutes for like half comedians on there. I felt like, uh, comment that you know they want to help out in some way yeah. and it, that really meant a lot it really like especially since i've i've been in and out of the comedy scene just i, I love doing comedy i love telling jokes uh and there's a lot of people that grind a lot more than me you could say like going to every open mic they can mm-hmm. uh doing these competitions and stuff and i'm just i'm not there alongside them as much but i care so much about comedy especially local comedy and i try to do what i can uh but just seeing all of them just like pop up and be like yeah uh what are we doing let's do this let's yeah. let, let's hop in and get things done and uh, it really meant a lot to me uh so thank you all thank everyone who said anything uh i hope you can all be there so i can give you hugs on friday yeah and uh it's also really nice uh the heavy anchor lending you the spot too to, for yeah the, night and- the heavy anchor josh and jody um thank you guys so much uh the heavy anchor is a great place to go uh any night yeah, quite man. honestly, uh, it it usually has great shows. It has something going on there almost every night of the week, and it's just uh, the way they have the, the bar divided, where you can walk in and it's like your average dive bar with this really cool feel, uh, and then behind the garage door is just this great venue space where like it, it, I've seen so many good shows there, whether it's music or comedy. Uh, I've also gone and like painted pumpkins in that showroom, <laughs> and yeah. Uh, um, plus the patio, I have so many memories. Just hanging out in that back patio, especially during comedy shows, like or after shows, and just uh, just talking with other comedian. I would kind of think a pod shit cast should be done back there, just like on deck of the heavy anchor, because uh, sure. like there's they have their open mics there on Monday nights. Chad Wallace runs that. Um, it's a great time to see local comedy. I, I love doing open, seeing open mics just because it's you know the, the people around town trying out new stuff, feeling out the crowd and I, I that's real comedy that's like the like bare bones stuff and i think more people should really go to open mics in general yeah man. especially at heavy anchor great place cheap drinks awesome people can't say that enough yeah uh i think i i think i first met uh libby higgins on that uh patio back there uh it was i think I used to go to a lot of those uh loser shows with, yeah uh, with, yeah with, uh jeremy and chris and mm-hmm. And I'm pretty sure that was the first night I met her, and I, it was, she was one of those that I would like. I'd seen her on like Vine and whatever at the time, R.I.P. Vine. Yeah, she. Uh, yeah, <laughs> she was doing her, you know, like Carla and her characters, and then like, but uh, so yeah, I was kind of starstruck when I first like right? ran, ran into you, her out there, and I'm like, oh hey, wow, this is you know. She, I actually got her to do my comedy digest show in September. She's going to be doing it, and I got so excited when uh, Tree told me she got. Uh, uh, Tree Sanchez, shout out to her. She's my yeah. co-producer and co-writer for the Comedy Digest. Um, Libby Higgins is going to do that show. She told me that she was going to do it. I was just like ready to do backflips. <laughs> I love the Carla videos. Oh yeah. Uh, when I found out she was going to do it, it was like right before she went to Las Vegas to shoot something. I don't know, not sure what she was shooting exactly. I'm not sure anyone quite knows the exact parts, but like I don't know. She's hilarious. I wouldn't yeah. be surprised if she blew up nationwide soon. Like yeah. she's just I mean everybody knows the excuse me bitch stuff. I mean, <laughs> yeah. obviously that that one definitely went viral. So um but her, her and Tina Dybal have a, gr- a good podcast too. Uh Yeah. 
Oh, Slop City. Slop City. Uh, thank yeah. you. I dropped that. I was yeah. like in and out of my head for a second there. Yeah. Well, she. Uh, anyway, but so you never know who you're going to run into at those shows and, mm-hmm. and hanging out there on the patio and stuff. Like I said, it's always a good, a good hang out uh, at Heavy Anchor and stuff. But yeah. Uh, so after the comedy show, uh, we also. Uh, we're gonna we're kicking it over to some karaoke for the we night. We are. We're gonna sing some songs because that's what my crazy family does. Yeah. We, <laughs> uh, so this I, with uh, with Jen uh, Sturvey. Jen Stuvey. Stuvey. Uh, Sturvey's the the, the on typo. the post. Oh, yeah. Oops. <laughs> Stuvey. Jen Stuvey. Uh, she is so nice and she runs awesome karaoke. She does stuff uh, Tuesdays at the Crack Fox, Sunday nights at Riders on Chippewa, um, and she also i'm not sure if it's every friday but most fridays i'm pretty sure she's at the crack fox as well doing karaoke uh and she's just a lot of fun she has a very big songbook and uh she's just you know sometimes you get those karaoke djs that are kind of like uh i feel like too controlling for the like the evening Uh, it's like there's a bunch of Drunk people trying to have fun, sure. you know. Like, uh, there's a couple places I've been to in Sular trying to do karaoke, and it's just, the guys are like, they know that if you want to go up with a hundred people on deck, you got to give them money, and they're not going to put you up unless you're doing that. <laughs> and Jen deserves way more money than those guys because she just uh, she makes things flow well, and she's a lot of fun. She's a, she's a great person. I love you, Jen. Thank you so much for doing the show for me. Yeah. Uh, I can't wait. It's gonna. I, I'm really excited. When she like when she said she was gonna do my show, I was like, yes, this is gonna be a great night. Now, it's gonna be a f- great way to finish everything. And uh, uh, there's also gonna be a fifty fifty raffle right before uh, karaoke starts. I'm, we're gonna announce the winner to that. People can come and try to win some money themselves for a good cause. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah. yeah. That. Uh, do you have a karaoke uh, go to? I. Do uh, it is Possum Kingdom by the Toadies. Oh, nice, yeah, oh yeah. That's kind of out of left field. A lot of people are like, "What is that song?" And then when you hear it, you're like, "Oh, this one." And, All right. Uh, I love singing that one. I also like doing uh, uh, that Neon Trees song. Everybody talks. Okay. Um, and Uptown Funk is a fun one. Sure. I'll, I'll jump onto that one sometimes. Uh, recently started doing uh bad romance by lady gaga just yeah. because like why not <laughs> right and uh yeah i mean it, it doesn't matter if i can sing it i'm gonna try to yeah. I, I like karaoke a lot yeah i i don't do a ton of karaoke but uh my my go-to for a while and um uh, i'm I was all, i'm big on like 90s music a lot of 90s uh totally uh so i used to do a ice ice baby and <laughs> baby got back and that kind of stuff like just it was uh, a lot of fun too those are just silly songs and uh every, every makes me laugh every time so Did you keep that baby thing going yeah and, uh try to do uh hit me baby one more time there you go my, yeah my buddy from high school just josh stevens all made baby it songs all baby songs yeah. man <laughs> ba- baby why not <laughs> <laughs> that uh what were you, what were you gonna say your friend Oh, Josh Stevens, he made an acoustic version of uh, uh, Hit Me Baby One More Time and like put it at a talent show. But I haven't seen that guy in like 10 years. So I don't know. Just a memory that popped up of yeah. like someone changing. Uh, I like that a lot. Covers of songs 80% of the time are better than the original song just because it's like something I'm familiar with and it being different is interesting to me. Yeah, I agree, man. I, I like it's fun. One of my one of the, the biggest like one that comes to mind when I think of like somebody totally flipping it is. Uh, there's a a guy on uh I think well I think it might be the band but it goes by Obadiah Parker on on uh, and uh they took uh, hey yeah, 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 yeah and yeah. they like made an acoustic folk version of it and it's like it's fantastic it just is. like that and like but it's just like it's it's so opposite of the you know the the original that we're used to and stuff so like But it's got the same soul to it sure. though and it's got like I uh, that same I don't know the, the same feeling you get when you heard uh outcast that sing that song for the first time you know yeah. uh no that, that's a great that's a great cover actually yeah. i agree with that yeah so I, I agree i love when just people make some take something that we've known forever and just flip it and make it something completely original and um so it i, I don't know it's still fun when people do it a cover like the same it's still yeah. it's still fun uh but 
it's like, well, if I want to listen to that version, I will. I'll go listen to that version. Like, I was pretty disappointed with Weezer's last album, where they did a bunch of covers, and I was listening to some of the songs. Some of them are different and like interesting. Yeah, but a lot of them, like their cover of uh, uh, Africa uh, by Toto, uh-huh. uh, it sounded so similar that I have a hard time telling the difference for right. most of it. And it's like, I feel like you just capitalized on something that was you know becoming popular again sure and did you uh did you hear the story behind that so song though no i have like, not that that whole thing is like a goof like uh okay. like they were trolling a fan uh so i was reading into it some of it i'm not like a huge weezer fan but i got a lot of time to kill so i was uh <laughs> i was uh reading this uh so they had a friend uh fan on twitter that was like hitting them up like all the time like hey you guys should cover toto uh <laughs> africa so they finally like went and covered a song, but they did uh, Toto's Rosanna. Oh, okay. Um, and they put that out as a single, and just just to mess with this guy, one fan, yeah. yeah. And um, so I thought that was hilarious that like they went and covered the the wrong Toto song. And it's like you know, it's like and um, and then they end up releasing like the Africa and some of the whatever the rest of the. I think they did like a whole. Uh, it, it, their couple. last album was mostly covers of random yeah. stuff from like throughout the, the ages, I guess. Yeah, but anyway, I just that was like that's that's a pretty good move though, where you can just just mess with one person, like make that joke, and so Weezer is a def- is a pretty decisive. Like people are either like really into Weezer or they're like, nah, man, they suck. Right. Now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I did see a Hard Times article recently that was like, go back to. It was, it was it was kind of a dark joke, but it was it was still really funny. But it said uh, the headline was "Go back to September tenth, two thousand eleven, and tell uh, warn everybody that Weezer sucks in the future and stuff." Like that. <laughs> so I was like, I thought that it was a kind of a, a double double joke there. That uh, yeah, you, you go back right before the World Trade Center, yeah. and instead of doing anything about that, you're like, right. "No, Weezer's yeah, gonna suck, right. guys." Yeah, that's the that's hilarious yeah. right there actually i like dark jokes oh, yeah. i uh i like telling dark jokes i recently have been telling one uh about like how like so i have a daughter myself and most of my friends don't have kids so like both my close friends are just you know they're 20 something still wanting to go out in bars and have fun and stuff like that and then i have had problems like trying to explain like I got a daughter, so I can't do that as much. Sure. Like, it's not, like, the life I can necessarily live. So I have a joke comparing them to uh, kids to cell phones and how, like, uh, you know, they're they very similar. You know, you, you, get, you want to take care of your cell phone in a lot of ways you take care of your kid. And uh, I kind of end it with, you, you can't uh, buy a case for your kid right. until after you drop it. So... <laughs> <laughs> So I make sure I step on that punchline now, so in case any of you guys see me, you already know. Ah. Uh, yeah, yeah, you hear that joke again. <laughs> All right. <laughs> uh, well, let's uh, let's go back a bit. I mean, okay, we, okay, we've yeah, been we've talking, jumping around. We've been yeah. talking about the show uh, a bunch, but I like being that this is our first time talking mm-hmm. and getting to know each other. Tell, take me back to the. Uh, always grew up around St. Louis, or are you uh, are you new yeah. here? Or? Uh, I am a South County boy. Uh, Grew up going to Limburg High School and then uh, had my daughter when I was 19 and I lived in Jefferson County for a while, um, just kind of getting my feet under me. And uh, then after me and her mom split when I was like 20 years old, uh, I kind of needed an outlet for stuff, you know? Um, and so I just kind of started doing comedy uh, probably about 2000. 14 i did my first open mic okay. and i did it at the uh valley park funny bone which doesn't exist anymore yeah, that didn't yeah. yeah right it didn't last that long the flood got it well, it was a good spot though i mean like i don't know that it ever quite took off like it should have <sighs> i think it was they, cool i think they struggled um ever since the opening like it just never never nothing ever clicked right uh i mean i'm sure they had good nights but it's like they had oh, yeah. they brought in some good headliners over there uh i think the biggest mistake too is like the train tracks right behind there like uh, those nights where they had like pause for the train to pass by and that like, was something that happened yeah. sometimes uh and it's, I, when i f- first started going there i didn't think that like uh i assumed that you weren't getting people out there just because of the location like it being down in valley park you didn't really draw as many people but you go to uh 
Mike's place or Bobby's place. Not Mike's yeah, place. Bob, yeah. uh, Bobby's place right there is always packed with people. And it's like, why couldn't we like make a deal with them or something <sighs> like, you know, free drinks over here. Sure. If you come in or it's like, I don't know, something to get people in there in the door. And, uh, well, I mean like uh, they didn't, have, they didn't have an electric sign for, for a long time. They just had no. a banner out there. They like the pet store is lit up more than the, the comedy club. <laughs> right? and, like, so it was like, <laughs> I don't know. It was uh, yeah, there were so many hack jokes about there being a pet store right yeah, there too. Right. <laughs> but there was, a, but there was like so much they could have done better to. But it was anyway. But uh, R.I.P. Yeah. that yeah. place. I, I miss that place. Uh, but I started doing comedy there, and then just around St. Louis in general. Uh, then I met someone and got married and stopped doing comedy for like about a year and a half, two years. Uh, that didn't last that long. Uh, the marriage part, so I hop back into comedy because honestly, comedy's not going to leave me. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and then uh, I've just been kind of, you know, trying to make my own way and doing that ever since. Sure. Uh, was this something you thought about? Like, would it be, does the thought really just come from needing the outlet? Like, uh, or or nah. was it like something you thought about in school? Like, were, I always like making people laugh, right? And. Uh, I always felt like my brother was the funniest one in the family, and that always irked me because I was like, you know what? Nah, no way. I'm gonna, I got this. I want to do this. And uh, that and my grandpa, he always, everything was always a joke with him. Always a joke. Sure. Uh, I actually kind of want to get a tattoo of two bananas and an orange and a door because he would tell that joke, like you know, knock knock, who's there? Banana. He would tell that joke till the cows came home, and he would think it's freaking hilarious. It wasn't, grandpa. <laughs> He's the produce man, so I guess he really liked the fruit stuff. I don't know. Uh, it's a huge Gallagher fan. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he did not like Gallagher. Yeah. Ruining all that fruit. It was <laughs> the waste yeah. of watermelons. <laughs> Throw some salt on there at least and eat it. Um, yeah, so, like, I don't know. I, I'm one of eight kids, and uh, everyone's so loud. Uh, and, like, it's hard. It, it's easy to get, you know, kind of passed over and stuff so you got to learn how to be loud and once i learn how to be loud i realize if i'm going to be loud i, I should probably have something to say yeah uh <laughs> <laughs> shouting aimlessly All doesn't right. do much um and then when i was you know coming up in school and stuff being a loud person just kind of trying to be funny and i wish more people would realize that i feel like with the internet everybody's like you know Hey, I got something to say, but like, <laughs> yeah, but then yeah, what but, is it? <laughs> but, but, they, but they don't. They all they all want the attention, but they don't have anything to say about it. But no, exactly. So, uh, but yeah, that man, that's got that's pretty wild. Eight, uh, one of eight, huh? Yeah, uh, uh, six sisters too. Yeah. So yeah. I got one brother, six sisters. Uh, I'm number seven, so most of them are all older than me. That's made it. You know, it's, it's kind of unheard of. Uh, you know, because obviously, like my, I come from a big family. Like my. I only had one brother, but my my dad was of uh, six kids, and my my mom was a uh, six six kids. So it's oh, like, yeah. so there's uh there's a lot of uh you know other bigger families, but it was, it was all not this generation as much. No, as, you uh, don't see that as many right. times. Uh, as a matter of fact, I come across a couple people, um, a couple people when I was doing comedy when I first started, like had about as many kids, if not more. Uh, Ryan Reese was someone who has I think like nine siblings or something like that. And I was always like, man, you beat me. <laughs> so many jokes I can't tell now because you've been doing this first. Uh, but it, it is weird nowadays. You don't see that. Like, I pff, I have my one daughter, and I, I don't want, you know, seven more. That's right. like That sounds like a bad... I tell my mom all the time, she should have stopped my second sister. <laughs> not, like, don't worry. About, like, I wouldn't be around, but honestly, it was me. I was that nearly... <laughs> it was missing that. <laughs> Uh, so you, uh, so Valley Park is the first uh, open mic. Yeah, and you, uh, you, you feel like, uh, uh, well, you just hooked in. I mean, that's like this. A lot of people say like it's just like that. You that first time, and then it's like, what got me my first time that made me be like, okay, I want to keep doing this forever. Uh, is I had a bit written out, uh, like I typed out like a three page bit about Oprah, and it was just. One continuous five-minute joke, uh, which uh, I suggest anyone who's thinking about doing comedy, don't do that. Because, <laughs> like, if you're going to tell jokes, especially when you're starting out, a lot of people, even I have a problem doing this now. There is some sort of formula to telling jokes where it's 
you know, premise, setup, punchline. You know, you want to keep it going, keep people laughing. Uh, I like telling stories, so, like, I try to weave that in there. Um, but I started telling this Oprah story, uh, and I realized no one cares about Oprah. Like, <laughs> no one wants to hear me go on about Oprah. So instead, I uh, segued away from Oprah and told uh, an embarrassing story uh, about, like, my 21st birthday party. Uh, it's... <laughs> This is actually a conversation that got me talking about strip clubs with Sam Lyon and his right. podcast. So, because <laughs> uh, it was a strip club story, and like I just remember feeling like I'm telling this really embarrassing uh, story for me, but I'm having a lot of fun doing it, and I'm owning it, and right. the crowd's being really receptive, and I realize there's like a lot of opportunities for me there, enjoying myself, just being me on stage, and uh, yeah, I just wanted to keep doing it. Uh, you bomb a lot though doing comedy. Like I, I've definitely had more bad shows than good shows in my life. Uh, but I think that's just part of the process and it makes the, the good shows even better. Yeah. And it makes, you know, it's an exciting time. Like to me, uh, every time I'm about to go on stage, the same feeling I get like right before I get on a roller coaster. Uh, like, you know, it's going to be scary. (laughs) You don't know if you're gonna die. This, you don't know. This if could you, be really good or really bad. No, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like especially that Superman ride at Six Flags, where like you hear about people losing legs in Texas or whatever, yeah. and you're like, oh, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna do it though. Yeah. Uh, and like that's that feeling, like that adrenaline rush, and you get on stage, and you just do it, and like it's a sense of performing where you're up there alone. Like I, I it's, it's refreshing to me. It's cathartic in a big way and uh it's just you know i i i don't know if i could be in a band because i think i'd just try to upstage everyone just because of my personality i would just try to be like hey look at me <laughs> so unless i'm a front man in a band i don't think i could do that but something i just being up there and control the room and getting strangers especially to be like well you're either gonna like me or you're not and right. i want i want you to like me but here's what i have to say um yeah i uh, i mean i totally relate even doing this show, you know, it's obviously a, a way different format, but, uh, I can, I mean, when we started this thing, like we didn't know what we were doing. The same thing was you go up here for your first mic. Like first time we pressed record on this, like we had no idea. Like we we're like, yeah, Hey, let's give this a shot. Unfortunately, mine's all documented. Uh, <laughs> you know, so yeah. like, uh, uh, but I feel like as I've done this show now for five years, like it's, I've definitely gotten better at my craft. I feel, you know, I feel more confident, yeah. confident in myself. But there's a, I mean, every time I sit down with a guest, there's a lot of times just like today, as we, as you walked up, like we were strangers, we got, you know, we knew, we knew, we knew each, each other, other but, but we didn't, we hadn't really like sat down and talked to each other before. Yeah. I've said, a, I mean, a lot of these, I go to the guests, so, which makes it even weirder. It's like, I go to somebody's house, I go to a stranger's house and like one, you know, I've done many of them like in their basements or whatever and stuff. So it's like, it's like, well, this is, you know. That's exactly what I say to myself every time. I was like, I see, well, this could either really go go really good or really bad. You know, it's like I'm gonna press record and see what happens. Luckily, I do have the power uh, to press to delete when I'm done. You know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> it, 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 it was real bad. Hey, we can forget about that and like, and we can move on. But uh, <laughs> luckily, they've all been awesome though. Like, I mean, I I've met so many cool people and getting to share their stories and stuff. And like, so uh, I'm really thankful just to, for the show for giving me the opportunity. But that's the thing is like. It, you got to put yourself in that place like to where you're you got to get past uh you know out of your head and just to be able to you know whether it's stepping on stage or pressing record or whatever it is so it's like i totally get that like just to get you know it's that that moment where you can get on stage and just own it and try to do your thing and yeah absolutely so. i every time i've ever done bad is absolutely been because not because the crowd wasn't feeling me it's because i got up there and i psyched myself out and that's every time i've ever done bad is because of that it's i feel like you know i'm not doing good enough which is a stupid thing because like what i'm not i'm not chris rock you know i'm not gonna go up there and do a show for twenty thousand people right now i'm doing a show for uh, a small room uh, of people that i'm lucky enough are here and i just want to make them enjoy themselves and make it, them feel like it was worth their while mm-hmm. and i know it's 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 a lot of that a lot of that self-confidence sure. really gotta like exude from the fact that like you just gotta take it out of your head and you just got to go and uh yep is a uh, is stand up like uh i mean was this something you would like to make a career or is it or writing or is like i mean is i like writing a lot yeah. i um 
I've been writing a whole bunch of random stuff lately that's not stand up, which isn't good for my stand up career, but uh, <laughs> I. So, Comedy Digest is something we haven't really talked a whole lot about yet, right. but uh, I really like writing stuff with Tree Sanchez. Uh, the last few shows, we wrote kind of like um, uh, sketches between comics. So, so Comedy Digest uh, is um, a showcase of local show producers, whether it's podcasts, uh, you know, other comedy shows, what have you. Um, I try to get some improv people, but for my format, they they would need more time than like the fifteen to twenty minutes I give performers and stuff. But, but the whole idea of the show is I want to promote the local comedy scene, and I want people to come to my show and then see what else is out there. Yeah. Um. So we've been, we've been doing about every other month, uh, just to kind of keep things fresh. Uh, but also to keep things fresh, I don't like telling. Like I want people to come to that show over and over again and be like a regular audience member. So I don't want to tell the same uh, stand-up bit to right. people over and over again uh, if they're going to come back to the show you know, every other month. Uh, and I also don't have like the time or discipline to come up with a brand new 10 to 20 minutes uh, that I feel good about that I want to do on stage and then represent the rest of the show. I would rather um, do what I've been doing with Tree and write... Uh, a kind of a skit with these characters we've become like the stage persona of Tony Gardner and Tree Sanchez and Rocco Hogan, who's been our sound guy. Uh, he's been my best friend for uh, 20 something years now. I've known him since third grade. Um, so, and, and it's been a lot of fun kind of like playing off our real life personas and also like figuring out who these characters are on stage and stuff. And, I really enjoy that. Like, if yeah. I actually ever went to school in my life, I would probably go back for something with writing because I like character development. Mm -hmm. I love movies. Um, and so that would be more of a career field for me if I wanted to go that way. But honestly, right now, I'm just, I don't like putting pressure on that. And like, sure. uh, I, I'm not trying to like fall into pipe dreams and like try to be like no in 20 years i'm gonna be in hollywood like yeah if i made it there in 20 years sure. yeah that sounds great <laughs> i would love that uh if i'm not then i'll probably be here doing the same thing i am doing and i'd love that too yeah yeah man uh i just think like that's what's kind of fun about comedy i mean obviously a lot of people want to be the performer um but there are so many different avenues you know that mm -hmm. you can get into uh you know like i saying sketch or writing behind the scenes or you know different you know there's i mean tons of stuff so that's kind of the fun thing i think about there's always i always go back to that that uh the, the great mitch hedberg uh joke about that like you know like uh how it's you know oh yeah you, you can write or you know you do comedy can you write too can you do this or whatever you know and then he's like but you never it's never the same for everybody else you yeah know? it's like oh you're a great chef can you can you uh farm too and all you know, like, <laughs> but that's uh so some people are just better at doing one sect of thing and like right. want to stick that way. But uh, you kind of have the same freedom with music a little bit. I mean, if you're into music, you could be a producer, you right. could be uh, just a songwriter and stuff like that and work yeah. on music. Um, I guess there's not as many avenues still as there is for comedy in general, but right. like uh, you can have some. Yep. I uh, I also think about uh, Daniel Tosh has a great joke about uh, being a football player and how like you know they can make all this tons of money and he was like even when you're like too old to be on the starting team like you can go be on the practice squad <laughs> yeah. and still make a million dollars and he's like yeah I'm gonna do that and he's like and then like then when you're done with that though you can coach and you can make whatever so much money he's like yeah that okay I'll do that and like you know just yeah st it, still making money doing it and stuff but with comedy you could be yeah, the age does not matter if right. you're funny. Oh, yeah. and you can be funny. And there, there, are, there are people who didn't start doing comedy, like do the first open mic until they you are know, over 30. I mean, uh, Ron White didn't even contemplate doing comedy. I mean, he was a funny guy and stuff like that, sure. but he didn't even think about doing it. I think his first open mic was when he was like 28, and then, which is how old I am. Yeah. And then I Bernie, I, Bernie Mac, I think, is that a similar story that yeah. started way late in life, mm -hmm. too. And, and you just kind of go with it. You yeah. know, it's like. Uh, Comedy is definitely something where uh, age doesn't matter. And I, I've had some pains where it's like I've wanted to focus way more time on telling jokes and writing jokes. Uh, but, you know, your life comes first. Uh, 
for me at least. You know, people have different yeah, yeah. opinions on that stuff. Uh, I was talking to Chad Wallace uh, again. He runs the uh, open mic at the Heavy Anchor on Mondays, ten o'clock. Comedy shipwreck. Comedy shipwreck. Yeah. Uh, Chad's great, man. Chad is great. I love Chad. I've been trying to get him to do the show. Shout out right now. Chad, yeah, Chad come Chad, to the show. Yeah, we have hit him up a couple times. Come to our apartment. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but he, uh, I, I love watching, especially following him online. Just He makes me laugh all the time with, uh, Chad's funny, with man. his postman jokes and stuff. And uh, Chad is like, I, it was, it's been great going to the comedy shipwreck because he is definitely someone who utilizes the fact that he hosts open mic every week to his advantage mm-hmm. and like, when I stopped doing comedy for that like year and a half, two years, and came back and like saw Chad do his sets again, it was like, oh my god, man! Like you just came out of nowhere. Yeah. He is funny. Yeah. And I was talking to him about doing comedy because I was stressed out that like getting back into it's been kind of uh, you know rocky and stuff. And he made a good point. You know, walk while you can and run when you get to. Yeah. You know, as, as soon as you get that chance to start. You know, moving up, then you do that. Until then, just stick, stick with it. That's all yeah. you can do. Nice. And so that's that's kind of where I'm at right now. I'm just having fun, sticking with it, yeah. trying to help the scene out where I can. That's good advice. Yeah. Uh, well, you mentioned uh, Comedy Digest. We do have a show on the books uh, for September sixth. Yeah, Friday oh, night at and the Heavy Anchor. That's back at Heavy Anchor again. So, um, but uh, obviously the big one we're pushing for Friday night, July twelfth. Uh, so come on out, raise some bunch of money for. Uh, for Heidi and, mm-hmm. and um, have a good time doing so. It's gonna be a lot and, of fun. Uh, but uh, um, oh, you mentioned movies. Uh, that you're a big fan of movies, also. Mm-hmm. Uh, is there anything uh, you watched recently or coming up that you're real excited about? Is there any- <sighs> new movies are hit and miss for me, so I yeah. really try not to put too much stock into them. Like comic book movies are a lot of fun. I want to see Far From Home. Um, I've been liking some of the horror movies that have been coming out recently. Ma. That was pretty good. If you haven't seen that, I, I I haven't, but the trailer creeped me out. So like, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure it's, uh, I'm sure it's pre- that's unfortunately we are in the the. Uh, I mean, obviously this is nothing new, but trailers. Uh, there's some trailers that are really good, really you know put to well, together very well, and then like you go watch the movie and it's just like, oh, man. it's a trailer but longer. Yeah, right. It's like, <laughs> oh man, they really you know just give you all the good stuff right there in the trailer. And but uh, I will say that Ma gives you a lot in the trailer but you need to see the movie in order to really understand why that stuff is really creepy yeah. and there's a lot of stuff they they keep out of the trailer sure. they, they did a good job of having that balance for that one at least uh personally i think it's set up for a sequel not trying to get up any spoilers but you know how horror movies go oh yeah i mean yeah, everybody wants to build a franchise after, especially after like saw did 10 of them saw or whatever. like which i did re- i just hear they are doing a new one for 2020 no for, they're not really yeah, i'm, I'm not, sure it's already shot there's a new there's a new one on the way uh actually speaking of chris rock he's writing it what yeah the saw movie yeah Chris Rock? Yeah. Uh, well, it's like if, uh, if Jordan Peele could do this, I'll do it. I guess. I, I mean, that, that's exactly what I thought of. Like, yeah, Jor- Jordan's writing horror movies. I'll do one, too. So. Which he's going to do Candyman. It's coming out in 2020. Yeah. And that looks... I, Candyman, I saw uh, when I was five years old. And I remember seeing that movie and, like, just... like this. Have you seen it? The uh, original one? Year, yeah, years ago. Yeah. Like. There's a scene where it was like she finds her friend, like, dead on the floor and the cops come in. And uh, like it sticks out of my head so well because yeah. I'm pretty sure this is also the first time I saw boobs <laughs> on screen, and she's just crying and like th- there's a, a big lady cop who's like, please lift her left breast, and she's just lifting her left boob. And she's like, Can I <laughs> call home now? And I'm just kind of like, what is this? What, <laughs> where is my mom? Why am I watching this? <laughs> I don't know if I should be scared or excited. Or <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this is so confusing for me. <laughs> and uh yeah i don't know that's another one especially watching those things young like i think like you know chucky's uh, just made a return which i that i I don't, know, I don't know if i can bring myself to watch that but, i don't know if i could either but wa- watching movies like those like uh in that era like when we were kids and stuff and like just like you know scared the shit out of me and stuff like um watching some of those horror movies uh way too young and stuff and i watch a lot of them way young i think my my mom actually had the idea of like let them see stuff when they're young and <laughs> then uh they'll be just messed up in life and uh, enough in life they'll you know be com- <laughs> they'll be a comedian in their 20s yeah so. exactly <laughs> <laughs> so they're gonna go to bars might as well let them have fun there in the right way right yeah. 
but uh, there's another movie that was coming out. Well, we're going to talk about horror movies and Jordan Peele. Us was a great movie. It's on DVD now. Yeah. Uh, but that was such a good, interesting horror movie that like it keeps you like entertained to like the last second. And I still have conversations about that movie uh, with people about like weird symbolism and stuff. He tries to fit in there. And I, I think Jordan Peele is a, a genius in a lot of ways. He's Key and Peele. The show was hilarious. And, uh, he's a great sketch comedian and he has a great mind for how things need to play out and like keep an audience entertained. And I, I, th- I'm really excited for more of his stuff in the future. I haven't seen like any twilight zone though. Mm-hmm. Cause he just came out with the new twilight zone stuff. And yeah. I, I don't know how much he's involved in it or if he's like the head writer or something, but I know he's like the host of it. And I want to see it cause I hear good things, but I yeah. haven't seen anything about it. I haven't seen it yet. Sure. Yeah. I, I haven't seen anything about it either, but the originals obviously were iconic, you know, yeah. so, so good. So, um, that, uh, a key and peel also, uh, were involved in um, the new to- uh, Toy Story, which was really great. Uh, oh yeah, they they, I felt they were um, added a lot of comedy relief to it. Like it was already a, a good story, but having those two involved, like I mean, they they definitely steal the scenes when they're in, those their characters are involved and um, they're that, carny toys, right? Yeah, like, they're uh, like a stuffed bear and duck and uh, in the and the carnival and um, yeah, they're. They're really funny, and uh, but yeah, it does a great movie though. It's like I'm not, I mean, the whole series has been phenomenal. Oh, but, God, uh, I, I I haven't brought myself to go see that one yet with my daughter because yeah. I don't want to cry in front of her like I did in End- <laughs> Avengers. I yeah. cried so hard in the Avengers. Yeah. I love you three thousand. Like, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this this one, I feel like like it was definitely. I cried. I think at the at the end of three, but not yeah. But four. Uh, it's 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 a great. I mean, it's. Very well done movie, uh, but I don't feel like it was as mo- as emotional as uh, as as three was. Because three was big for me because like we, I I was like Andy, you know, it's like I was like I, yeah. I aged with him through those years of those movies. Like mm-hmm. so, I was like in that similar age range where he's going off to college and all that stuff. So a lot of that was like very fresh, you know, like kind of that sim, you know, and I put myself in that moment. So, um, so but. Uh, f- Four kind of shifts gears as it's kind of focused more around that little girl that uh, well, that's good and stuff. So it's uh, um, you know, but yeah. Anyway, getting so, a new generation. I, yeah. know, I know it's caught some flack because it has a trans character as a spork or something like that. Well, I don't. Know. I mean, I don't know. Like, I don't know how it's. He, I'm not, not flack. I'm totally yeah. down with that idea. Well, but I, I've yeah, heard. But I, don't, like, I don't know. We know how like they how they got how they how it, I, don't know, I didn't know that it was supposed to be trans or, or what I, it's something I different I mean, yeah it's trying to be accepted as like you know what it is and but uh, i mean that's kind of like uh that's sort of the the whole beauty of the joke is like that it's you know he he doesn't want to be a toy she made him a toy kind of thing yeah he wants to be yeah, a sport you know, he, he's, he thinks he's trash Aww. and the whole time so like it's yeah it's really well done but uh well, I'm, it makes yeah. me want to watch it. Really yeah, bad. it's a good movie, man. Like, it was, uh, and then um, you go through a lot of it. I don't know. If, I don't think it's a spoiler, but Woody, uh, you know, he's he's like kind of the leader, so he's obviously trying to make him feel at home, uh, welcome, yeah, and stuff, and so because um, he knows what she, what Sporky, uh, or Fork, Forky, he's a Spork that named Forky, uh, make. Because he knows what he, uh, he means to the little girl and stuff, so so he's just trying to like keep. I mean, it's kind of yeah. weird how these you know creatures are sentient, and they never really go <laughs> into the fact that like they're interacting with humans. So it's not like make believe. It's right. like these things are possessed. Let's be honest. Let's <laughs> yeah, call it what right. it is. People, toys are possessed. Yep. As soon as you get oh. something eyes, all of a sudden it becomes alive. Yep. There's a uh, my my favorite scene. Uh, my favorite line in the movie is there's a. Uh, so they're in this like uh, antique store, and there's a ventriloquist puppets, and uh, and then uh, Forky's like, "Man, those things are creepy." And I was like, <laughs> "And I'm like, good, like, it's just funny that they say it, but but it's like even in animation, those those things are yeah. still super creepy." And it's like, <laughs> so, um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, Tony, yeah, Tony Hale is the voice of. 
Forky. Oh, okay. And he's uh, really funny as that character. Um, I mean, it's a obviously no no surprise, but yeah, Toy Story Four is really great. So go see it. I'll have to go see Toy Story Four. Like I said, I haven't really. I think the only other movie that has been on my radar that I want to go see is Midsummer. Oh yeah, that definitely. I saw that trailer too, and I was like, no, oh, no, I, I don't know <laughs> if I can watch that. Like, it was some weird shit in there. It's like gory or something. I don't know. It's one of those horror movies where it's like they don't necessarily tell you what's going on. It definitely got like that vibe of like, uh, you know, Manson and like the kind of cult thing. And well, uh, we bring up Manson. That's another movie coming out. Uh, uh, Once upon a time in Hollywood. I didn't realize that until the last trailer I saw. That's actually. Uh, like Marilyn, uh, Marilyn Manson, not Marilyn Manson, <laughs> Charles Manson. Yeah. Uh, Charles Manson's like a, a, a key role in all that. And like, uh, it has, looks really good. Uh, Tarantino, I think makes really good movies, but he's kind of, uh, like a D bag filmmaker. <laughs> like, I don't know, like some of his stuff he does is like just an excuse to say the N word or like push the race topic or, sure. well, he's uh, definitely obnoxious, but, uh, yeah, he, got, definitely, he makes some great films though. Like, yeah, but he makes such good movies. Yeah. That's so frustrating like, for me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, some of it is a little overkill. Uh, a little, but full fiction, man, like is one of my all time classics. Like, of course, it's. I mean, the 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 dialogue is amazing. I mean, the, the, some of the shit that they say just so good. Um, Reservoir Dogs. Yeah, one of my first Tarantino movies I saw. All shot. Like ninety percent of the movie is in one location. There's like ten characters maybe in the whole movie, and it just feels like you're in this big city and this big chase and this big right. situation. And it's just like it's done so well. He, he's really good at what he does. Mm-hmm. And uh, Reservoir Dogs, I can't suggest that one enough too. And Death Proof, that was a good one. Oh yeah, yeah, that whole uh, double feature was that was a lot of fun. That grind, that grindhouse yeah. double feature, yeah. that was really good. Yep. Uh, let's. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. He's uh, he's a very he's a very talented man. But that's uh, I'm I'm excited to see that one too. I think that'll be fun, especially uh, yeah. I mean, it's another outstanding cast with yeah, with Leo and Brad Pitt and all that. So, do you have a you have a favorite older movie, like maybe one from like earlier than '95? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'll, like I'm a huge comedy fan. I watch a ton of uh comedy movies i don't go like i just recently started getting in more into like watching uh even even classics like uh you know goodfellas or whatever and stuff you know like things like that like where you know more action and uh or thrillers and different things because i was just like so stuck on watching comedy for so long just because like that's what i loved you need, uh, a, you need a refresher for sure. a while yeah. and otherwise you just stop laughing at everything all right but i was like i mean he obviously i grew up on farley uh so i mean mm-hmm. all in sandler and all the stuff so obviously those were a big part of my youth uh watching a lot of those but uh, if you're going back i mean i'm, I'm also a huge uh fan of uh, mel brooks so young frankenstein and oh, blazing yeah. saddles and uh you know space balls and men in tights i mean that whole i have the whole like box set and like those are all i feel like men in tights is probably the most underrated of all of those men in tights has a great cast and has so many good jokes uh and it gets gets overshadowed yeah. because people, yeah I, I don't i don't know why actually uh, young dave Chappelle in there too like yeah so, yeah <laughs> a jew where <laughs> at you <laughs> yeah. right. that uh yeah he uh i don't know they're all they're all great I'm, i think mel's one of one of the one of the best comedy writers uh and, and all the, the people that he worked with um that's uh i mean yeah it's like i don't know there's but yeah robin Hood and tice is definitely a, a great movie there's so much funny stuff in there. Yeah. Uh, I like movies that are almost unintentionally funny. One of my favorite movies of all time, uh, Kurt Russell, Big Trouble Little China, has so many funny bits in it, but it's really more of like, when it came out, uh, I mean, I just listened to it the other day. I watched it and listened to the commentary because I'm a nerd about stuff like that. I love buying DVDs just so I can listen to the commentary. If Netflix got that, I would pay twenty dollars a month just yeah. to listen to all the commentaries on stuff but uh like that movie has a lot of funny bits and it came out almost supposed to be, supposed to be like a uh, escape from new york type thing or i mean it's john carpenter he was, it was supposed to be an, a straight up action flick right. but 
just the Jack Burton character and like all the ridiculous things he's saying, like yeah. him walking around in a kimono complaining about his truck getting stolen. Uh, and then like they're talking about what's going on. He's like, hold on guys. I feel like an outsider here. It's like, well, you are, but you know, <laughs> all right. That, uh, I, I'm, I'm with you on that too. Like what well, is a movie? Uh, obviously, uh, full metal jacket like is, and that one makes like makes me laugh so hard. Uh, I agree. Actually. It's not, it's not a comedy, but that character, Arlie army with the, as the drill instructor, every, all the shit he says to them. I mean, if I was in the moment, I'd be, you know, scared out of my mind, but like, Oh yeah, no, but as I'm watching it as a movie, like it makes me laugh so hard. And especially as like the, you know, as they start messing with him back, like, is that you, John Wayne? Is that, you know, it's like all that. <laughs> Who stuff. said that? Yeah. Who the fuck said that? It's just like <laughs> so good. And like, you know, for, it's unintentional comedy, like you're saying. It's not. I don't think. It, well, at least I feel like it. I don't know. I, yeah, it was because that that movie was totally supposed to be like the real life of being uh, going to Vietnam. I right. felt like uh, not like I know. I mean, I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was born in '91. I don't right. know anything about Nam, <laughs> uh, but like it definitely. I've seen that movie many a time too. I like. I like that one a lot. Uh, yeah. There are more funny parts of that movie too, besides that too. That's sure. kind of creepy. Oh well, the, the whole thing when they go to go to Vietnam and then like you know they're uh, they the, the hook the prostitute or whatever is like you know uh, five dollars. You know, <laughs> we like, love oh, you a long time. That's that's, uh, that's, that's too the much. Song. <laughs> yeah, that's too much. That my my mom won't let me spend that much. <laughs> Uh, and she said she, she wouldn't yeah. get with the one guy because it's like no too big, too big. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah there's a it's a classic though man that's uh such a great film you got to find humor and dark stuff though that's right. one thing i was always taught as a kid my mom has always said uh if if you're not laughing you're crying and i mean that's part of the reason i'm doing this humor uh, sure. versus tumor show is just because like my niece has been so strong through this whole situation and I try to make her laugh as much as I can, which isn't that hard because she is just very bright. And she, I, I say this is the world's worst headache for her because that's how she treats it. Just like it's a headache and it's so empowering. And if you, if you can't find a way to make jokes about the hard stuff and laugh when you can, mm-hmm. what's the point? Sure. What's the point of making it through any of this? You know, everything's funny. I mean, I remember uh, my grandma passed away, uh, I don't know, like four or five years ago now. Uh, and <laughs> so, like I said, I come from a big family. Uh, the priest asks everyone who's not in the immediate family. So my grandma is like her children, which she has nine, and her grandchildren to leave the room for like a moment of peace. And all of like 10 people walk out. So there's still like 50 people in this room for like this right. private moment. My mom's sitting in the back and just sees this happen. And like in the middle of the moment of silence, she just starts cracking up laughing. <laughs> All right. And it's just like, this is not the time, mom. This yeah. is, but it's, they got everyone laughing. And that's just that spirit right there that like, no matter what the situation, you can laugh at it. And I, one of the biggest things I have a problem with in comedy are people that get too critical about jokes and like, like rules about, what you can joke about, who you can joke about. And I'm going to probably get into some arguments with people on this, uh, but I don't think there's any topic you can't joke about. I think and even the really rough ones that people are like, well, no, you can't make jokes about that. It's like if it's done well in, the good, in a good way right. and it makes people laugh, I think everything. And uh, I think there's a local comic, uh, Nathan Orton, He's hilarious. I love him. I feel like he probably agrees with me on that. And I know he gets a lot of flack from people around town about some of his opinions and stuff like that. And kind of. Sure. Uh, yeah, f- I agree. I think, I mean, I think funny's funny. Funny is funny. But, but uh, it's also, <clears throat> I think the part of the, the problem, I think, is some of the, when it hits, uh, and it, or you, you tell your joke and it's not, it doesn't land. And yes, and people, <laughs> and people blame that their people aren't, you know, oh, they, they just don't get it or, you know, because of this or whatever. It's like, I think, I, I think a lot of people want to blame, like they, they think their joke is still so funny that the people's just like, well, it's like, no, it just wasn't that good or whatever it is. You know, it's like people, 
just because you made it, you know, push an edgy joke and you said it out there and, you know, it's like, if it's we, not funny, yeah, it's not funny. Right. There's a difference there. I think sure. everything can be joked about. Not everything's funny. Those okay. two things are different. Sure. <laughs> like, I, just, I just feel like people, it, 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 if it didn't work, it's because people don't aren't don't think it's, you know. As, I don't, yeah, I don't, I'm trying to have a hard time articulating. <laughs> I, I get what you're saying, yeah. though, because like, uh, there are subjects which are obviously yeah. too touchy that I won't make jokes about yeah. them because... It's not. It's not from my sure. reality. It's not from my experiences in life and stuff. So no, there's jokes I won't make. Yeah. But does that mean I believe that you shouldn't make jokes about them if that's your experiences in life and but, you have an interesting take on this to make it funny sure. and make people laugh about it? Because I think that's how people grow and get over things or like help heal stuff. Oh, uh, yeah, I agree. It, is being able to laugh at it. Uh, well, and you take away, you know, if it was. Uh, you know, uh, whatever it might be, but like you also take away that power uh, from it. You know, mm-hmm. whatever. Absolutely. You know, you whatever it was that was controlling you, you make that joke about it or whatever, and you can laugh about it now and stuff. It sure it might still sting, but there's parts of it. But like you can kind of you take that power away from it. Like I think so. Yeah, and and I think. So I see. I don't want to be misconstrued here and be like, no, I want people to make horrible jokes and I'm right. gonna laugh at them. No, it's not that. It's that. Uh, I think comedy is a useful tool in sure. uh, society where you need to laugh about, especially the harder topics, and you need to find a way to kind of bridge that gap to get there. Um, I mean, heck, comedy back in the Middle Ages with gestures and stuff, those weren't used for the masses, you know? Like, they didn't tell jokes to a whole group of people. They were actually used to, as, a, as a conduit from the people to the people of power to kind of be like, hey, there's people dying over here. Mm-hmm. Uh there's bad stuff happening. I know you, King, don't want to hear it, but you kind of need to hear it from someone. So I'm going to tell it to you and make you laugh about it, and maybe we can fix these problems. Uh, that's not how comedy is now. Obviously, it's not quite the same, but I do think there's some level of relevance there where... Sure. Uh, well, that, and that's kind of the same thing, too, with being like at the uh, you know the clubs and stuff. A lot of them are like kind of... Oh, you got to watch me just hit clubs. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm saying like, down in the basement kind of thing low you know low ceilings like smoky you know <laughs> and like you just feel like you're going and doing something wrong and like so it was a place to for people to talk about shit that you can't talk about everywhere else so yeah like you know it was a it was a safe haven at one time for people to say some dirty wrong stuff about some you know whatever it was and yeah and that's all see now yeah. i feel like I, I, this topic has got me a little bit worried now because i am not saying it is okay for right. people to go up there and just make sure. like but they're terrible degrading jokes but yeah, degrading is not I, the same i but, agree yeah but like i'm saying it goes back to it again if it's funny it's funny but it's like yes but there's also a lot of terrible not funny jokes just because people say something edgy about it and it's like you know so and I, when people make the argument when they have like, I'm not an edge lord at all. I try to please people. I right. am not over here trying to be yeah. like, look at me. I'm, I'm only over here, you know, saying this thing that you guys hadn't heard before. No, right. I, I'm not. I'm not about trying to push the limits on that type of stuff. Yeah. I just want to make people enjoy themselves and laugh. But but people who argue for their jokes because they feel like the audience just isn't getting it and they're blaming an audience. That all of you guys who think that you're wrong because you're doing this for the audience. Right. You know. If you have something good to say, or if you have something to say that's edgy and you can make people laugh about it, then keep telling it. If you tell this joke and you're just upsetting people and feeling like you're getting edgier and edgier and the audience just isn't the audience for you, then don't try to find the audience for you. Just stop telling that joke yeah. because like, you're not going to get anywhere with it. You're going to burn a lot of bridges and just figure out how to make the things you want to say funny. And then eventually you'll be able to say the same type of things and be funny about it. Mm-hmm. Uh, but you can't just go out there and just start saying, like, you see that at open mics a lot. Yeah. <laughs> like people are just trying to be edgelords. Sure. But I agree with what you're saying about, especially uh, with this show in particular, like, you know, having, yeah, it's a super difficult time, but hey, let's laugh and have a good time about it and, ha- you know, try to make the best of the situation. Um, so I, I, I love what you're doing with this, man. I think it's, Thank a, you. I think it's a great thing. Um, and, uh, you know what we let's uh let's come on out to the heavy anchor july 12th and, and raise a whole bunch of money for heidi that's right and uh and you know i mean is she gonna is she gonna be there that night is she gonna heidi is not gonna be there that night no she's been doing treatments uh she's doing radiation treatments right now um 
I believe they started at 6.45 in the morning mm-hmm. all this week. Um, hopefully this will be our last round of treatments for this time through, and then they'll check everything and see where they're going to go from there. Yeah. Uh, prior to this, um, she went through three brain surgeries, uh, like right back to back to back. And let me tell you, when we found out about this, it was a shock. I remember I was at a friend's house, and I got a call from my brother, and he was crying, and just they t- tidy had a brain tumor, and like I remember me and all seven of my siblings just showing up at the hospital, and like just being there for my sister, and just like everyone in this shock of like, there's no way, there's no way something like this is happening, and like it was just scary, and yeah. that's the, the biggest thing. That, you know, I'm going through a similar situation with my yeah. mother, so it's like. I think that it's super scary, but it's it, it, the the scary part comes from the unknown. It's like man, yeah, it's like you know what what is that? Because I don't know anything about this cancer stuff, and I was like, well, you know, and at the time we didn't know what was going on. It's just like what the hell is you know happening? It's like so, and it's, and you just feel helpless. You can't like you're like I don't know what to do. I don't know how to do it. And like mm-hmm. so, and we didn't we didn't have like any good days there for a while until like the first few surgeries. Because the reason they found out about uh, my niece is that like she's been saying she's had a head- headaches and stuff and then she started acting a little funny for, and she's only 10 years old so like uh, like one day before school like she was just really tired and they didn't know why and she'd been complaining about headaches for a while they thought it was just her vision and then like she got out of the bath to go like before school and stuff like that and she was just so tired that she had just like collapsed back on her bed and Hmm. without getting dressed yet and my sister's like this isn't right this isn't right so they took her to the doctor uh it took her to her doctor first and her doctor said that it was probably nothing and they took her to an urgent care afterwards and the urgent care did uh mris and like you need to go to children's hospital right now and they took her to children's hospital um found out she had uh the tumor that they saw and she also had uh, four cysts that were sitting on the base of her spine and it was blocking uh, her brain fluid from draining properly um, out because I mean it's a continuous cycle and stuff like that so without that with that blockage there from the cysts uh, it was putting too much pressure on her brain and it was just it was just too much for her little head um, Man. so they had to do her first surgery um, just to relieve uh, some of that fluid and stuff uh, and pop some of the cysts, and then the second surgery was to try to get rid of the rest of the cysts and to put a uh, not a catheter, I can't like a stent in, so that uh, it could drain properly. And uh, they were trying to avoid doing the last surgery. They thought maybe they could not have to deal with the tumor, depending on what was going on, because they got a little bit of it in the second surgery, and they realized that. It wasn't anything that was going to keep growing and get necessarily worse, but it wasn't good. Uh, they ended up opting to do the last surgery where that was the most invasive, where they had to remove a chunk of skull so they could get in there to the pituitary gland and remove most of the tumor. Uh, but just from the where it was, uh, they couldn't get it all. So since then, she's been doing uh, radiation treatment. Uh, and she's just been complete trooper through all of this and like this thing has been kicking her butt and she's been right there fighting it right back and uh i think you know my whole family has been trying to fight with her and uh humor versus tumor is my way to fight this thing yeah, and so I, I really hope everyone listening right now makes her you know takes her chance to come out and just say hi even and just come listen to some comedy come sing a song with us uh just be there and help support. Like that would mean the world to me and and, and Heidi. So yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, I, yeah. I uh, I don't know, man. There's no easy way to do it, but like I said, at least uh, you have the support of your your friends and family, yeah. and uh, come out and have a good time. And like I said, take your mind off of it for for a couple hours and and just let loose and have a good time and make raise a bunch of money for them, so now i hope i hope uh, everyone comes out and cuts loose yeah. i know my sister nicole who's heidi's mom uh she's a fun person uh she's probably gonna get drunk that night so that's gonna be really fun to see let's come out see her have a fun time well, singing the, karaoke i'm sure uh 
I know um, Heavy Anchor, I'm sure they got those uh, PBR tall boys and oh, stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> Oh, yeah, they got uh, – I'm sure, I'm, I mean, they, who knows, we might have a drink special or something. Yeah. They always have drink specials, but maybe we'll have something yeah. Heidi-themed. Uh, right on. So it, it's going to be a fun night. Yeah. Uh, it's, and if nothing else, we're just going to be people – all there for a good cause and it's gonna be a lot of love there's gonna be just a lot of memories being made there Mm -hmm. and uh i'm excited for it i'm very excited for it and i think it's gonna be a lot of good things coming out of it and i think it's gonna be a huge help tidy yeah and at least be a huge help to my family of kind of cutting loose and just not worrying about stuff for a second so um, i'm very optimistic it's gonna be a good time so again, I, uh, quick uh, reminder on the details: uh, July twelfth, ten dollars uh, suggested donation at the door. Heavy anchor, uh, eight o'clock start. Uh, you got J.C. Sabala, Amber Clear, Sam Lyons, Jeremy Helwig, Angela Smith, and uh, are you gonna you be performing? I will be uh, doing some stand up. I'll be hosting the thing. Okay. Uh, I'm hosting, so I'll probably do a little bit of time up top, um, keeping everyone interested in the middle, trying to sell some fifty fifty tickets yeah. while it's all going on. Um, yeah, right on, man. So it'll be uh, a whole production. Yeah, good. And you can uh, you can find more things uh, from Tony you can, again. You can uh, the Comedy Digest page on Facebook. You can uh, follow along there. We'll have uh, September sixth of the Heavy Anchor also for the next show there. Yes. Um, so find all that online and uh, yeah. If you like comedy in general in the St. Louis area, Comedy Digest. Uh, it will me and Tree Sanchez will be expanding that soon. Uh, but it is some place that. You can find all different types of comedy shows happening in your area. That's what we made it for. I try to spread the word on local comedy, independent comedy, Comedy Digest, Facebook. Come find us. There's tons of information on there. Uh, great place to find some fun. Yeah. Well, Tony, I appreciate you doing this, man. It's been a ton of fun getting to meet Thank you, you and Shane. getting to share some of these stories and songs. And uh, well, our, oh, the songs that will be songs the, of our the, hearts, the karaoke songs we'll be singing. Songs that will flood our apartment uh, together i'm uh, so excited the neon trees and and, (laughs) and baby got back and (laughs) all those songs thank Uh, you so much uh i'm really happy you let me on this podcast this has been a great absolutely a lot of fun yeah for sure it's good good hang so let's do it again sometime soon man absolutely all All right right. thanks guys Thanks everybody thanks for listening have a great day bye bye rock paper podcast rock paper podcast rock paper podcast well yeah that was it